few weeks ago, I made this jar. Only stones and river water. But what appeared inside left me speechless. Strange creatures started to emerge. Some looked funny. Others like aliens from a science fiction movie. In this jar, nothing is safe. Nature is relentless, unforgiving, but nature is also wonderful, giving us magical transformations. Let's go back to the day it all began. Rivers are one of the biggest sources of life on our planet, so I couldn't think of a better place to start this project. That day I was lucky enough to meet this friendly turtle. First we add a foundation of stones and gravel. The stones I'm using have a lot of algae on them. That's important because they produce oxygen and consume nutrients. I'll also add a plant with the same purpose. This helps the ecosystem stay balanced, with plants producing oxygen through photosynthesis. Once the jar is ready, we can head home. And believe it or not, inside there are already thousands of living creatures. Some are even bigger than you'd expect. Next step was planting the river plant. I placed it carefully between the stones, with the roots covered. It usually grows in mud, so it won't rot, but the leaves must stay above the water. That's why the jar is only filled a little over halfway, not to the top. The water I used also came from the river. Right away, one of the first inhabitants showed up, a bladder snail. A bit later, a bloodworm appeared. Now it was time to close the jar and let it rest for a few hours. That way the water clears and we can see what's inside. A couple of hours later, the water was crystal clear. The algae shined in a bright green. Looking closely, I could already see dozens of tiny creatures moving around. The first and easiest to spot was the bladder snail, a classic in rivers and in aquariums. This snail wasted no time, already eating algae from the stones. Only a few days later, it had laid eggs. If you look carefully, you can see the baby snails moving inside. From my experience with jars, the population will stabilize on its own. When there are too many snails and not enough food, nature finds balance. Wise, but also cruel. Attached to the glass, tiny anemone-like animals started to appear. They move gently with the current. They are from the jellyfish family. They look harmless, right? Nothing could be further from the truth. In nature, nothing and no one is truly safe. Let's look again. The mosquito larvae touches Hydra's tentacle. Instantly, it reacts and pulls the larvae into its mouth. Nature doesn't forgive mistakes. Since the beginning, this insect has been moving at full speed. It's big, but hard to film because it keeps jumping. It's the back swimmer. A voracious predator, though honestly, looks harmless. One curious thing, it swims upside down, always on its back. Another insect, smaller but just as fast, is this water bug, much more elusive on camera. Most of these insects are predators. They eat smaller insects but also feed on carrion and organic remains. This one is a caddisfly larva. It lives inside a little tube. It built itself with sand, stones, and plants. For me, it's one of the most fascinating insects. Always moving around, carrying its house. At the very bottom, I found this. I know, it looks scary. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a mayfly larva because of the tail with three tips. But honestly, it looks more like an alien. Sometimes, for me at least, it's a bit unsettling to think that the same river where I swim and play like a kid is full of these strange creatures, but the truth is, they're harmless to us, and they play a crucial role in the ecosystem. Another fast swimmer is the diving beetle, a very beautiful insect. One of its coolest features is the air bubble it carries on its back. Like a submarine, it lets it dive, float, and swim. At the very bottom, we find one of the tiniest but most famous creatures, copepods. I'm sure you've seen them in your aquariums. They're usually the first to appear when cycling a tank. They are the base of the food chain. 
food for fish and invertebrates. That's why they hide among algae and detritus. On the lower part, you can see two small sacs. Those are the eggs, which they carry until they hatch. This jar holds hundreds, even thousands, of species. I'm not exaggerating. Just staring at one spot for a moment, you can see hundreds of tiny dots moving. Sadly, my lens can't zoom enough to show them, but I could spend hours describing all the different species inside. The magic is knowing they're there, each one playing its role in keeping the system alive. I want to finish with the most special creature of this jar, one of the first ones I showed you, the mayfly, or more exactly, the mayfly nymph. I know, it looks terrifying. It's the top predator here, nothing above it. The accordion-like parts on its sides are gills. That makes it look even more alien. The next day, the nymph disappeared, leaving only an empty skin. But something was strange. If it had died, why was the body so destroyed? The truth was different. Metamorphosis had happened. The nymph had turned into a mayfly. Maybe you wonder why they are called mayflies. They spend months in the water as nymphs, but once they transform, they live only a few hours. Their life is truly short. That's why I couldn't let it spend those few hours trapped in the jar. I released it. Every time I build a jar ecosystem, I never know what will happen. Some ecosystems die in days, others last much longer. Only time will tell. After all, jars are mini-worlds. Just like our planet, they go through eras. Some species dominate, others decline, and new ones rise. The secret of life is water. But in this case, we also need light, so algae and plants can do photosynthesis. Six months ago, I built one of my first jars. Here it is. Today, scuds are the leaders of the jar. They almost became a plague, but in time, the population will balance itself. This is how it looked at the beginning. If you want to see the video of how I built this jar and its strange inhabitants, click here. Thanks for watching.